Hey, yo, what's good everybody? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of wild and crazy clips from all over the world. I hope that everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. The house with 200 demons? What? This lady, Latoya, she basically purchased a house in 2011 in Gary, Indiana. She moved in with her three kids and her mother. They were living there for a couple months. Nothing was really going on, right? And so out of nowhere, a swarm of flies like started violating the porch like crazy, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where you coming from? Keep in mind, it was cold outside. When it's cold outside, do you really see that much flies or insects like that? No. So they started to think like, oh, maybe something could be dead. And they didn't really think nothing paranormal about it. They just thought it was just annoying. But then started getting a little bit more weird they would hear like creaking doors doors opening and shit also like heavy footsteps in the basement so time was passing by and stuff started getting even worse when latoya and her kids started getting possessed her kids would randomly start like saying random words in different languages and doing these like weird smiles and just a lot of creepy paranormal stuff nobody believed that the was actually a real thing bro so like they ended up taking her kids and stuff an investigation started going on where priest chief of police the actual uh, child protective services they took some pictures and stuff and they caught pictures of like some spirits really i have the pictures yeah no way that's real bro what the f they had to determine what demon exactly was possessing the house so they had more power over it she believes that one of the demons that was possessing the house was named belzebub the lord of the flies the funny thing is is that that mother zach bagans uh -huh. he actually purchased the house that's wild. Why Why would he purchase the house? For what reason? Yeah, you know, to make a documentary out of it or turn it into some kind of tourist attraction? Like, I don't know. It's wild. And we are following breaking news right now coming out of South Florida. Chopper 6 live right now. This is over the Star Island home of rapper P. Diddy, where four law enforcement sources tell NBC News that a search warrant has been executed by federal agents with Homeland Security investigations. Now we're hearing another search warrant has been executed at his home in Los Angeles. Now at this point, it's unclear why. We know that the rapper whose real name is Sean Combs has faced accusations of sex trafficking in recent months. Last year, singer Cassie sued Combs, accusing him of abuse. That lawsuit was settled, but more women later sued, accusing Combs of sexual abuse. NBC6's Christian Cologne is on the way to the scene and will bring us a live report coming up. Mm -mm -mm. Like I've been saying, all this stuff about Diddy, we've been avoiding it for like the last year and a half, but it's finally starting to like show its own face. Let me tell you something. Remember that old show, The Boondocks, the cartoon? Go watch the Gangstalicious episodes. <laughs> Just do it. All right, let's look at the worst haunted items for sale on eBay this month. Here we go. Look out, this marble was owned by 30 different witches, and it protects you whenever you are going to astral project. Unfortunately, it does not protect you from paying $25 for a marble. Is this key haunted or did it come from a haunted insane asylum? You know what? It came from a haunted insane asylum and it's a haunted key. That's two haunteds in one. Sorry, but the price does not include the math high school doodle page that it's sitting on. That's an extra $5. If your name is Susan, you're in luck. You can stop aging and have a long life with this ring. Want to live forever? Hey, wait, there's two of these rings available. That means that you could live longer than forever. Man, that's a deal. Did you ever want to move stuff with your mind? This is your talisman. This turtle, which was bought in bulk from AliExpress last month, can make you a real telekinetic. Watch that $75 float right out of your cash app. Oh shit, I don't know how it happened, but this coin you can buy on Etsy for $6 has become authentically haunted by the demon Lucifer, who is also demonic and dark and satanic. Good thing you told me. Buyer beware. But I guess that goes for both buyers, because again, there's two available. Double darkness! He said double darkness. That's ridiculous. Just a little look into all the uh, types of things you can find on Etsy. Yeah, 
here high. Yes. It looks like a spaceman, I swear to God. Are you serious? It's just like like an astronaut in a spacesuit. I swear an to God. Like, in the, a space suit. like the Michelin man. What? I'm not freaking kidding. That's the way it looks oh, to me. Okay. I'm going to zoom arms. in, okay? Okay, you're low. I'm going to zoom in Go just a little bit. I'm refocusing. Shit, you're high, you're high. Okay, there, you're a crystal. Same Michelin man. I know it looks like a Michelin man to me. Is it the Michelin man? I'm not freaking kidding. Dude, when you see this, like person, uh, yeah, exactly. He, Jonathan just said it looks like a person. He's freaking moving. Are you serious? Not freaking. Is it moving? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like arms are moving. Arms. You're high, you're high, you're high, you're high. You're high. Arms. All right. Who let the Michelin man blow up, fly off of the top of the building, and then decided, let's film it and call it a UFO? Yeah, I'm showing that clip because it's making the rounds on TikTok and other platforms right now as like some kind of new video proof aliens are real kind of thing. And uh, this video has been around for like 10, 11 years all over the internet. And I'm pretty sure it's just literally a Michelin Man uh, blow up from the top of a building. After he rounds the corner, he comes across a woman. The woman is in a white dress with what we could only guess as bloodstains on it. Mm -hmm. Because the woman looks like she's in distress, he stops the car and asks if she needs help. But she responded with a horrifying scream. This is when the man drove off quickly as he felt he was in danger. Who knows what this woman was possibly doing out there. Yeah, it is a little questionable, but at the same time, like, how do we know it wasn't staged? Yeah. Well, that's what they're realizing now with human civilizations, that it's very likely that there was a mass disruption of human civilization from asteroid impacts or something like that, and we had to rebuild. And that's what the pyramids are, and that's what a lot of the structures they find yeah. even in North America. We don't want to. We don't want to believe that this could ever fall apart, and we could be right back to square one, right back to living like nomadic tribal people. But that one hundred percent can happen. It probably doesn't even have to be the war, though. That's no. the problem. The problem is we're in a fucking shooting gallery. We're spinning around in a shooting yeah. gallery of massive chunks of space debris. That literally is the stuff that forms planets. So much of it out there. And if one of them collides with another one, and one of them's coming in from some other place, and it hits one and just yep. sends it right towards us. Yeah. And some of them are fucking huge. Yeah, it's true. Some of them are absolutely huge. And, you know, that is a good thought, you know. What about all the stuff that's supposed to be out there? Yeah. Well, if you think too much on it, it's going to stress you out, Joe. Promise. Tell them about the man who hid me, Mommy. Tell them about the man who hid me. And let everyone be at peace. It's okay. To my grandma, I want to say you love your kids so much and thank you for the teddy bear you gave me. Mommy, promise me you won't cry. Be happy, not trapped. And don't try so hard for someone to love you. Don't push them away either, and don't cry about not being loved by Tony. This was all an accident. No. Hmm. Well, that was really weird. Um, I don't know how to explain that. Do you remember these books from your childhood, the McGraw-Hill science textbooks? I mean, this company published all sorts of textbooks for elementary through high school kids, and I definitely remember reading some of these in my classes. But did you know that one of the companies that published these books was owned by Ghislaine Maxwell's father? If you don't know Ghislaine, she was Jeffrey Epstein's business partner and she helped run his massive sex trafficking operation. She was the madam in the operation and would recruit girls into his terrible ring. But we're not really here to talk about her, we're here to talk about Robert Maxwell, her father. Now, Robert was an extremely wealthy British businessman. So in 1984, after Robert Maxwell had already acquired a lot of wealth, he purchased a publishing group. This group included publications and newspapers like The Daily Mirror, which is still in existence. I mean, there is a lot to uncover about Robert Maxwell. He was best friends with a lot of British royals. 
He rubbed elbows with celebrities, with the elite. And like I said before, he was extremely wealthy. He even had a massive private yacht that he nicknamed the Lady Ghislaine after his daughter. Now, with all of these powerful connections, there has to be some sort of controversy, right? Well, for decades, it's been alleged that Robert Maxwell was actually a spy. And people don't really know which intelligence agency he worked for the most, but he has ties to the Russian KGB, the British Intelligence Service, MI6, and the Israeli Intelligence Service, the Mossad. People have alleged that Robert Maxwell was actually a triple or double agent, meaning that he might have been sharing information between three different Secret Service organizations. Obviously, this showed that he didn't really have anybody that he worked for in particular, he just chased the money and the power. It's very strange that his blood daughter, Ghislaine, would end up being directly involved with one of the biggest sex trafficking rings in world history. Now, you can read a lot about Robert Maxwell's supposed spying. One fact that I found interesting was that six former and current heads of Israeli intelligence attended his funeral, but his death was extremely suspicious. So in November of 1991, he went sailing on his private yacht, he disappeared, and just a few days later, his completely nude body was found washed up. According to people that examined Robert's body, there was a graze on his shoulder, but there were no other noticeable injuries. But something strange is that when experts took a look at his body, nobody could conclusively say exactly how he died. And the official statement said that he may have had a heart attack and then drowned as he was urinating nude on the side of his yacht. Years later, though, a lot of different things would come out about Robert, including the fact that he bugged a lot of devices and rooms that his own employees were in because he felt like they were being disloyal and he couldn't trust anybody. His own sons even came out and said that while they didn't know exactly what had happened to him, they knew that he didn't take his own life because he wouldn't do that and he had talked about how he would never do that. So obviously, this is just unbelievably bizarre how this all ties into Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein, that whole saga. And I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't talk about and the government really hasn't looked into. And back to the beginning, I can't ever really look at one of these books the same again. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty crazy. I read those, well, some of those books when I was a little kid too. And uh, that's, it's really wild how small the world is, how small the universe is, how connected everyone actually is. It's, it's wild. When you get out into the most dangerous places in the world, that's where you see nature. That's where you see the, the real rules of life, which is the only rules are those of physics. Bullets travel at X, you know, X feet per second. You have a collective team trying to organize against in a, in a very chaotic environment, trying to survive. But really, you, you strip every piece of what you know around rules around what's right and wrong your morality is put into question your mortality is at stake all the time and you see the real world it's 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 eye-opening to the point of you you understand how great we have it in the united states and how beautiful this country is and you also understand how fragile life is and how brutal the the world can be and how brutal humanity can be towards each other you know it can be gone mm -hmm. yeah it's true though that's really the only time you ever see how dangerous the world really is is when you're out in pure nature they've already took a monkey and transferred its consciousness into a computer that was done in 2010 in 2000 i think 16 or 17 it was to transfer a human conscious into a robot which that's been done in america we have darpa they are they have the avatar project look that up the avatar project i wrote about it in my book where they transfer a soldier's consciousness into a field robot and then the only thing that gets damaged if the robot blows up the the, the symbiotic link is disconnected through consciousness but the, the soldier's obviously not going to die and so this has all been done this is real science being actively used right now by 2045 which is the 2045 project in Russia, they're looking to transfer human consciousness into an actual being, an actual avatar body. You know, so they can take a skin cell from you, they can put it in a Petri dish, they can get it under the right conditions, turn that skin cell into a stem cell, culture that, turn that into a group of stem cells, and then grow that into a full clone of yourself using your own stem cells, and then transfer your mind into your new body. Whoa. I've never heard this before. Yeah. Ever. They've even created mind links where they can transfer 
an active awake person's mind into a person that is already awake and conscious. Hmm. That last one's wild. Transferring into somebody who is already awake and conscious. That's wild. Reminds me of the movie uh, Get Out. I have personally seen the insectoid or praying mantis type creatures. We also have the insectoid. Not, not a fun group necessarily because they are very frightening to look at. In fact, the first ET I ever saw when I was about five and a half years old was like this, only it didn't have the mask over the lower face as it did in this case. And it was very terrifying to see this thing and not know how I had gotten out in the backyard to be with this creature and it telling me it was my mother was very upsetting. <laughs> I thought I knew better. But the insectoid type do differ from the little greys. For instance, as this person's drawing um, can show us a little bit, there seems to be a very bony, high, hard ridge over the eyes. And more often the eyes are round uh, and bulging like fly eyes, if you will, rather than the elongated or almond or smooth, uh, shiny black eyes. The, the face in this drawing is covered by a mask of some sort. Now, we've had other cases where the aliens have used masks and said, we don't want to frighten you. We don't know why this one was using a mask. It was performing surgical procedures, but normally they're not that tidy about keeping the gloves and the mask on. The body being very, very thin and white, the person who had this experience and drew this was on a table paralyzed with his head pushed very far back, and this is all he could see from his ankle. He couldn't move. Uh, he said the arms tapered to a thickness no more than a broomstick handle. And he was did his best to, to show the long, thin fingers of the hand, but he said, honestly, from his viewpoint, he could only see a small, thumb-like device and one finger, although he thought there was probably one or two more. He just couldn't see them, so he wouldn't draw it. What do you think about the insectoids? Hello? I'm not going up there. Definitely not going back there. Oh wow, it, it is really cold right here. What was that? I don't think it's happy we're here. I don't know. Oh, holy. Dude, there's. Hmm, that's pretty wild. <laughs> you heard, hi, how are you? <laughs> I wonder if that was just somebody in the background on a phone or something. In this video, a group of researchers dives into the realm of electromagnetic ejection, a cutting-edge technology with vast potential. The video begins with an overview of the concept, explaining how electromagnetic forces can be harnessed to propel objects with precision and efficiency. Viewers are introduced to the diverse team of scientists, engineers, and enthusiasts who are collaborating on this groundbreaking project. Throughout the video, the passion and dedication of the research team are palpable, underscoring the significance of their work. By pushing the boundaries of technology and scientific understanding, they are paving the way for new possibilities in fields ranging from space exploration to transportation. As the journey continues, the promise of this transformative technology shines ever brighter, inspiring hope for a future shaped by innovation and discovery. I really can't stand these AI videos where it's like, oh, new technology will amazingly change the world. Um, magnetic technology is not exactly new. It's a good thing that they're trying to expand upon it, but that's not exactly new. 
The earth is darkness, it produces no light. All of the light comes from above in the heavens. This is why all religions stem back to the worshipping of the stars. Without them we would be dead. Why do you think Jesus is called the risen saviour, the light of the world, and has 12 disciples for the 12 constellations? The sun rises every morning and saves you, he's the risen saviour. Your body is the darkness, your consciousness is the light. Out of the darkness ye must rise upwards, one with the light and one with the stars. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Why do you think the Freemasons always show a ladder up to the celestial stars above? and depict all of the light coming from above. They want you to believe this to keep you stuck down here within the darkness. The stars represent the higher realms beyond the earth. Beyond the stars is the astral plane. This is why the word astral has star within it. Change this to astro, astronomy. Space is fake. Earth rearranged is heart. Heart means middle. This is why the Freemasons stand on the checkerboard. It represents duality, good and evil, day and night. Again, like I said, this guy has a lot of interesting content that he runs on his channel. Um, you should go check it out. Some of it is pretty convincing and some of it is really confusing. So, you know, just judge for yourselves. Make up your own minds, but go check it out. It's pretty cool. Hackers affiliated with the Chinese People Liberation Army have burrowed into the computer systems of about two dozen critical entities over uh, the past course of the year. And today now we're hearing that these are coming to light, that they are ready to essentially shut us down and it is spreading. So at least 24 different systems throughout the United States. We don't have information yet on which 24 are the ones that are compromised, but we do know Hawaii is amongst them. We do know that there has been an attempt against Texas power grids uh, and also a West Coast uh, cargo shipping area as well. The intrusions are a part of a border of a broader effort to develop ways to sow panic and chaos or snarl logistics in the event of a U.S. China conflict in the Pacific. Or in other words, if China goes to war with Taiwan and the U.S. tries to defend Taiwan, China right now is trying to cripple the U.S.'s ability uh, to operate among the victims are a water utility in Hawaii, as I just mentioned, a major West Coast port and at least one oil and gas pipeline. People familiar with the incidents told the Washington Post. Post. The hackers also attempted to break into the operator of Texas's power grid, which operates independently from electrical systems with the rest of the country. Several entities outside of the United States, including electrical utilities, also have been victimized by hackers, said the people who spoke on conditions of anonymity because of matters of sensitivity. So you guys, this is taking place and they're saying it's spreading rapidly. They can't They've never seen attacks like this against our utility systems, against our infrastructure in the U.S., and it's starting to pop up. At least two dozen, they're saying, have been compromised. So if they wanted, they literally could start trying to wreak havoc on the United States. Yeah, that's pretty wild to think about, um, considering all of our utility grids are actually pretty outdated. There's only a few of them that have been actively updating and modernizing the grids that they work on and the pipe systems and everything for the water and there's only a few places that have actually updated and modernized and most of america is still in the process of doing so so it's pretty scary to think you know with the old hardware and the old tech that's running this stuff that like it's not that hard anymore to hack into the older stuff like it's really not so just think about that that's it's a bad thing in the world i've never seen that i've only seen it in the movie final destination i've never seen something like that in real life that is absolutely wild 
I'm so glad you're okay, dude. The Pinkerton map, drawn in 1818, was the most accurate in the world. Well, almost. If you look at the southern hemisphere on the Pinkerton map, nothing exists, just open sea. Now, that makes sense. Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1820. It wasn't confirmed to be a landmass until 1840. But older maps show Antarctica not as a giant frozen continent, but as a land free of ice, a land where plants and animals lived. And these maps go back to the 1500s. In 1513, the Piri Reis map was compiled. The Piri Reis map shows the coastline of Antarctica and the animals living there. The Orontius Phineas map is dated 1531. The entire continent of Antarctica is there, and there's no indication of ice at all. It shows mountain ranges that we know are there. The Piri Reis map only shows the coastline of Antarctica, but the Orontius map shows interior features of the continent. And now because of satellite imagery, we know those features are there. They're just covered under miles of ice. If you sail to Antarctica during the 1500s when these two maps were drawn, you'd find exactly what you'd find now. Nothing, a frozen wasteland. But that's not what the maps show. Why? I don't know. You tell me why. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna go look more into that. I wanna see some of those maps and look over them and you know where they came from. I believe that you and Oprah are conspiring to kill me. Okay, and why do you think that we want to kill you? I've made a list. Okay, please. Let's go through this list. All right. First of all, you should know that one time an air conditioning repairman came to my home, okay. who, I, who I believe you sent. I believe you why sent. Why do you think that was Because me? he was fix, fixing my air conditioning, and then he pulled out, no joke, your headshot. Mm -hmm. Now, you would clearly walk around with like an envelope full of your headshots. That's stack. so you. Absolutely. And he said, oh, I was just at this man's house. Do you know him? And I, I heard like a wee, wee in my head, like a frightening, <gasps> ominous sound. So that's one thing that um, happened. I mean, that's... Okay, now should we talk about the time that I was doing a very high profile photo shoot and then a mysterious car drove by in front of my house? By the way, this is a true story. This is a okay, but this you is a did true it in story. a way so that no one saw you but me. <laughs> and I know that you engineered that. That's okay, so weird. Yeah, take, take us back you. for a yes. second. All right, so I'm doing a photo shoot for yeah. Los Angeles Magazine mm -hmm. or something, and I'm in hair and makeup. And then I was doing construction, so there was a porta potty right in front of my home. On the street, by the On way. On the street. In the way of the lane. And that we I'm were in going the through. heels up to here, like going to fall down like Paula Abdul. That's not a diss; it's a reference. Mm. <laughs> and. And sure enough, like the photographer, and they're all on the other side of the street, and then this car just slowly pulls up, and I'm thinking, oh boy, here comes a fan who's going to want a picture with me. You know, it's my life as a celebrity. And then the tinted window slowly rolls down, and it's Ryan, and he sees me in a beautiful outfit stepping into a porta potty. Not my best moment. And then I look at him, and I thought, I, I know he's planned this for years. I know, I know he's trying to get me. And then he took a picture with his phone. And then said, you know, how are you or whatever. And it was like a, a like a really backwards, weird James Bond villain uh, moment. Yeah, I agree. And then the window went up and he and like I was just speechless pointing like uh -huh. children of the corn pointing. <laughs> and no one believed me. And I was standing there in heels. And I believe I was in a tutu. You were. And you and came a out of the potty. potty. Going, That's it was, true. It was right. Uh, it's, it's true. He's trying to kill me. It, oh, oh, here's another thing that uh, happened. All right. So I was only on the Ellen DeGeneres show one time because she's not a big fan. And I know you guys are our friends we are so i'm about to do ellen and i really love and admire her and i'm about to go on and i don't want to screw up and as i go on the stage manager whoever actually says to me um whatever you do don't make fun of ryan seacrest ellen loves him okay never <sighs> after doing a million talk shows after letterman <laughs> and kimmel and today's show never oh. once have i walked out and been warned to not bring up anything, <laughs> much less you, and it's not even your show. You know, now I can kind of see your point of view on yeah, this. I yeah. understand. This is not a conspiracy. You should know that I have nothing against you. You're here to promote your product, and frankly, you are no longer on the D-list because I know how successful you've become. So, is this part of your plan with Oprah? No, this is not part <laughs> of the plan. <laughs> She's like, is this part of your plan with Oprah to try and be nice to me and trick me? Russia's president has warned Western countries there's a genuine risk of nuclear war if they send their troops to fight in Ukraine. We also have weapons. Yes, they know about it. Just now I said there are also weapons that can hit targets on their territory. And everything they all come up with now, what they scare the whole world with, 
that all this really presents a threat of conflict with the use of nuclear weapons and therefore the destruction of civilization. Don't they understand any of this or what? These are people, you know, these are people who have not gone through the difficult trials. They've already forgotten what war is. Now, in the context of the conflicts of Ukraine, the same thing is happening, and they think that these are some kind of cartoons for them. In a speech to Parliament, Vladimir Putin also said Moscow has the weapons to strike targets in the West. On Monday, the French president said they couldn't rule out deploying Western troops in Ukraine, a suggestion swiftly rejected by several NATO countries. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I suggest re-listening to that. That's some pretty interesting information right there. People are talking about the eclipse, but they're not talking about this. The sun and the moon are not aligned on April 8th. They are in Pisces. Right now, if you go to your Skyview app and you push forward to April 8th, plug it in, it will show you that the sun and the moon are in Pisces. They are not aligned. They are sitting beside each other, but they are not aligned. How is that possible? Because the sun and the moon have been out of place since back in September 2023. I've been doing these videos telling you that the sun is not where it should be. People are telling me it's the calendar. The calendar's off. Don't worry about it. It's where the sun is in the sky that's different. It's not where it should be. This eclipse is showing you that I am telling you the truth. Because if we see an eclipse on April 8th, how is that possible? If the sun and the moon are in Pisces, it can't be an Aries eclipse, right? If the sun is in Pisces, and if the sun and the moon are not aligned, they have to be aligned in order for you to see an eclipse, correct? So I don't have to be an astrophysicist to understand this, and neither do you. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as I can. Please share this because, I mean, this is just a no-brainer. These, these heavenly bodies are changing. They are not where they should be. And they damn sure will not show you an eclipse in the sky if they are not aligned. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I need you all who care to go look it up and see that the sun and moon were not properly in the position that they would need to be in order to cause the eclipse moving on this is no april fool's joke uh, but it might be making some fools out of investors out there all right take a look at your uh, screens right now uh, trump's media stock is down 18 uh, percent right there you can see it uh, it has been dropping Throughout the morning, this comes after the company that owns Truth Social posted financial numbers this morning. Here's the latest numbers that are concerning investors. Uh, Truth Social owner Trump Media lost $58 million last year, and it generated very, very little revenue, just four point one million million in revenue. Uh, put some context around that figure of revenue. If you look back at what Twitter generated when it went public about a decade ago, in that final year, when it went public, $665 million, more than 100 times what Trump media has been able to rake in. And, and, and some of this is not shocking because we know that True Social is struggling. I mean, it is shrinking. Monthly active U.S. users on iOS and Android down 51% year over year. It's not just much smaller than Twitter, it's even smaller than Threads. And I think all of this just underscores why uh, there's a lot of warnings out there about this stock, right? One professor told me it's a bubble. Another basically called it a meme stock. So Jim, listen, we're going to see <laughs> a meme stock. <laughs> yeah, that is some uh, enlightening information there. Go look at that stuff. Everything that deals with Trump's finances and all of his stocks he's involved in. Just do it. Just go look. If anybody knows anything about the solar system or the weather or whatever the, yeah, I think uh, uh, the F is going on, why is there a ring, a, a rainbow ring around the sun? And there's also like a rainbow like next to it. Y'all can't really see it, but look at that ring around the sun. What's going on? Like, does this have something to do with the eclipse or... I've never seen nothing like that before. You see the rainbow? That's crazy. Look at this rainbow. Around the sun. Like random rainbows everywhere. Big one around the sun. Yeah, it's pretty crazy looking. It's what we call a sun dog. 
but uh the way it looks is like there's just some giant black hole or something behind it huh it's crazy looking it's always been crazy looking to me i'm not sure if you heard but a couple of weeks ago it was made public that there's a rare disease where people look at people and instead of seeing people they see demons yeah kind of weird right you're looking at someone and their faces are disfigured and, and they look like demons. Um, so, with this event happening, you know, the solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, um, there's a comet called the Devil's Comet flying by, there's, um, there's, uh, um, CERN is about to fire up the machine and, and see what it is that makes the universe the universe we have nasa shooting rockets at the moon to i don't know what they are doing that for but who knows i mean i'm, I'm not a physicist I'm not, I'm not a scientist so i can't say why any of them are doing anything like that but what i can say for sure is that if you're seeing demons you're not it's just that rare disease they were talking about pmo proto meta vada fuda I don't fucking know. Just look it up. <laughs> he said, I don't know. Just look it up. Yeah, no, that's pretty wild what they're doing. It's almost like they're like creating some new distraction for some whatever reason. But apparently this is an actual thing and it's been on the news and everything these last few months. So something to look into. Y'all, I think I know what CERN was doing while this eclipse was happening. Do you see this? There is so many different videos and footage of demons flying by the sun. I'm about to show you another one in a minute. I'm going to slow it down right here. And then there was this one. And there's so many more. And if y'all really don't want to act like demons don't exist, there was a rumor that CERN was haunted after their first time powering up. And then as of lately, they say they found a 4D ghost in the CERN particle accelerator. AKA, they found a demon, another entity above our dimension. For anybody saying it's a rocket, you are completely fooling yourself. You are fooling yourself. And here is that one going back and forth. Look at that. That is insane, y'all. So does anyone want to tell me what all these demons were doing? Maybe this is why they brought up the demon face thing on the news. I don't know, man, but it seems like you're reaching out a little bit too far there. I'm not sure what was with all the sightings that we saw up in the sky during the eclipse. Um, you know, except the fact that everybody had their cameras pointed up that particular day. So it's, you know it's inevitable to have at least a few of them pop up online with things that are like what is that uh you could do that every day if everybody would pay attention to the sky the same way they pay attention to the sky on the day of the eclipse so Okay, it was a pretty cool video. I'm not sure that it, you know, proves anything, but it was a pretty cool video. 
Okay, so look, listen, listen to me. I'm sitting in my house, right? You see me make a video of the somebody or something in the sun. It's a clear day. It's after it's after uh, April the eighth, after the eclipse. So I'm coming out here. That's a really cool CGI right there. It's definitely not real. Um, you can see the CGI in it. You can see it with your bare eyes if you look hard enough. Uh, that comes from the same channel that was doing the one where the shadow walked in the sky behind the clouds that looked like it was carrying a staff and a few of the other things. So yeah, definitely CGI, but it's really cool nonetheless. Breaking news out of Hendricks County, Indiana. Around 11.50 p.m. on Monday, April 15th, Hendricks County Sheriff's Deputy Fred Fissler was responding to a single vehicle car crash near the area of County Road 300 South and State Road 267. Shortly after arriving, a passerby saw the deputy down and got out to help. The passerby used the deputy's radio to call for additional help to the scene. EMS arrived and transported the deputy to Eskenazi Hospital. Despite life-saving efforts, the deputy was pronounced deceased around 1 a.m. this morning. The driver of the single vehicle that was involved in the crash was listed in serious but stable condition and it was just announced that impairment may be involved. The deputy is survived by his wife and two children, a six-year-old and a six-month-old. He was hired by Hendricks County Sheriff's Department in December of 2021, and before that, he served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Rest in peace, deputy, and prayers to your family. Rest in peace, yeah, and I wish the best for your family. It's no good. The closest we've been to World War Three. Anti-Israeli protesters find the Hezbollah flag. The biggest flawed notion is that foreign wars stay foreign. Some even burning the American flag. Almost five hours, 38 activists were arrested after shutting down the Golden Gate Bridge. This administration is systematically moving us towards World War Three. Warnings coming out that this is the prelude to World War Three. And let me know your thoughts. Are we on the doorstep of a world war? We had received these warnings from the Colombian president over the weekend. And now over the last 24 hours, this is trending all over the internet as people are searching World War III with everything going on. And take a look, this just the last 24 hours. We are on the verge of World War III. Leaders have lost control. Fears Iran and Israel's rivalry could spark World War III with Vladimir Putin rubbing his hands. And yesterday, Donald Trump Jr.'s World War III remarks go viral as people are concerned about a world war coming. As things are spilling over into our nation, wait till you see the video footage of everything that unfolded yesterday all surrounding the conflict between israel hamas now iran we saw the largest drone attack in history against israel with iran just over the weekend and now also we are hearing that there will be a retaliation from israel now we had heard that there could be a response within 24 hours it has been 24 hours we are yet to see a response but israel saying there will be and Iran saying they will respond to that. Things will escalate in retaliation. And people saying we are looking at... Hmm. That's wild. All right. Well, that's all the videos we got for today, everybody. I hope you had a good time hanging out. I know I had a good time watching them. Go ahead and do me a favor if you haven't already. Like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and share this video with all your friends. Go ahead and leave some comments down below. It'll really help us out with the algorithm because we've been really slacking lately. Anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it may be for you. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.